Okay, good morning everyone. Um, um, I'm Fadi Fatala from UC Davis. Um, I'm actually a professor in the Department of Bio and Ag Engineering and uh, I just picked up the directorship for the uh, agreeability project which I'll, I'll describe uh, for you uh, shortly. And with me, uh, joining me in here is, is, is Miranda Mandahano and Maria Seha. They are the, the main staff for the, for the program. Uh, so the way it's going to go, I'm going to give a brief description about what is car accountability for those uh, of you who don't, don't know the program and not familiar with it. And then from there, I'm, I'm going to switch gears and talk about ergonomics and, and agriculture uh, and, and kind of make, make extension to gardening uh, as much as I could. But mostly the, the, the main focus is going to be on uh, agricultural workers and, and the, the things they face in labor intensive agriculture. So let, let me give you a, a brief background about agribility. Agribility uh, is a national and, and state uh, programs, or they call them projects, sponsored by USDA uh, subset, which is the National Institute of, of Food and Agriculture. And the whole vision of that program is to enhance the quality of life for farmers and ranchers and other agricultural work workers with disability. So that's kind of the main vision. And it's actually the, the programs have uh, throughout, uh, throughout the U.S. It's, it's represented in, in 30 states. Uh, and with one national program at Purdue University. So Purdue University is kind of the main uh, center for coordinating all the other centers throughout the U.S. Uh, and every program have a collaborative, uh, uh, sub-collaborative uh, partnership between uh, between us, the universities, and various nonprofit disability services uh, and organizations. So this is a, kind of a, a general overview of it. Um, as far as the our program, the, the California Agribility, we, we share the same mission in a way. Uh, we assist farmers, workers, and families to succeed in farming despite disabilities. We've been in. Uh, we've been funded by USDA for the past uh, 13 years. Uh, this is the new cycle that started in September 2014 and ends in, at the end of uh, 2018, August. Uh, so our objectives, uh, is basically we provide technical assistance, education, referrals, and advocacy. So this is kind of the main thing that we, uh, we provide. Uh, we do some far, farm site assessment, assessments so people who uh, with disability that they have, they, they are in farming and they, they need to look at specific situation that they have, that they, they're having problems with, we can go in and, and try to assess what type of assistive technology they can use to keep farming basically. And, and we can do work site and task restructuring uh, based on the, on the, on the assessment. And another, another uh, objective to us, for us is to provide assistive technology and equipment modification. So we, we work with our clients to, to say, well, what is, what is it needed? What, what type of assistive technology I could use to, to improve, either improve my farming or, or maintain my, my farming operation uh, viable. Um, and we can, we can, another objective is we train rehab and medical professionals mostly through seminars and, and webinars like this um, in, in, uh, in, in person kind of webinars, I mean, yeah, seminars. Okay, so in our case, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the, every agribility uh, uh, program, they have to have a partner, a paid partner. Our partner this, this cycle is Ability Tools, as, as you could imagine. Uh, because they, we've, been, we've been collaborating with them for the, since September. Uh, and then we, we have other collaborators. In the past four years, we had, a, we had the Arthritis Foundation, uh, and we have many other, other collaborators throughout the state and, and uh, in the U.S., but mostly in California, most of our collaborators. So these are kind of like an overview of, of what are, who are uh, our collaborators. It, it ranges from uh, Department of Rehab to uh, Farmers uh, Veterans Coalition to Pesticide Regulation Department in, uh, in Sacramento. So you, it varies quite a bit as far as the uh, department. So any anybody's interested in in our mission, we we usually collaborate with and 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 hopefully kind of promote promote the the big vision of our program. So as far as the program itself, we actually covered the whole entire uh, state of California. Um, we cover all 58 counties, and so we can get calls, calls or referrals from pretty much anywhere in, in, in California. Uh, 
uh, although I mean from a location standpoint we, we do more more in in person and more site assessment in the, at the local level and the regional level. So um, mostly Northern California and San Joaquin Valley is our our kind of most bulk of our uh, in person type of uh, uh, coverage. Uh, but but that doesn't mean that we don't cover the whole state if we if, if we get referrals from other parts of the state. So I'm going to again switch gears. So this is kind of our mission. I just going to give you background. I, I'm a professor of actually economics and biomechanics here at GC Davis. So I, I focus a lot on, on ways how, how we can look at a job and then how can we really reduce the risk for people to, to get injury or become disabled from that job. So this is kind of the general mission of what I've been doing uh, before I, I I took over the, the agreeability. So this, I'm, I'm still doing that too, so I'm in parallel. Uh, so let's define ergonomics for those of you who don't know the actual literal meaning. So if, if you look at it from a, from a definition, uh, it has two, two uh, uh, roots for it. Ergon is work and then normal natural laws. So essentially, ergonomics is the natural laws of work. Um, it, it is synonymous uh, in North America uh, to human factors. So people when we say human factors in the in the US and, and, and Canada, they they know that this is ergonomics. So they're almost interchangeable. Uh, the only difference probably when people say human factors, they tend to think about the cognitive or the psychological issues uh, involved in, in at work versus ergonomics. People tend to think it's more the physical side of things. So that's kind of the uh, kind of general or vague kind of distinction between them. So what what is it? So basically what it is it's it, the, the field uses a knowledge of human abilities and limitations. So if you know somebody's abilities and their limitations, you can incorporate that knowledge into designing of any, anything pretty much. So designing system, organizations, jobs, machines, tools, and consumer product. You see a lot of, lot of ergonomics in, in consumer products, uh, especially in the past 15 years, like from, from mouse, uh, mice for, for computers to keyboard designs, you name it. They, People understand how the hand works, so they can they can sculpture the, the the mouse, computer mouse, for example, to fit over the hand. That's an example. And why 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 do we care about this? The idea is, if you actually incorporate the abilities and limitations of of the humans into the, your design, you you provide a safe and efficient and comfortable uh, system that that will will lead to less less potential for problems like injuries and and, and discomfort among the users. This is why in ergonomics is a, it, it, it is an important issue to incorporate into the design of, of your system or your tool. So the main premise of kind of to summarize is basically you're trying to fit the job to the person instead of like in the old days people used to fit the person to the job especially you know in, in, in heavy, heavy uh, uh, physical labor type of jobs. So if you have a physically demanding job. You got a big guy with, with, with a huge, huge strength or big strength, uh, a strong person to do that job. Uh, we need to turn it around and say, well, let's design a job that where we're any, almost anybody can, can do the job. So we're, we're trying to think about, about the person first and then you design the job instead of the other way around. Oh, and, and as you can see, since the mission or, or the kind of coverage of ergonomics is, is going to be uh, really covering any industry in, in that you can think of, uh, from agriculture to service industry. The, um, the main area that the ergonomics is spread out in the U.S. actually is, uh, was mostly started in, in the military. If you think about it, um, back, back in, the, in World, War II, uh, World War II, there were a lot of um, accidental crashes actually among uh, f uh, fighter uh, plane pilots. So what happened is, so some planes were just crashing without any uh, uh, enemy fire. So what happened, the, after the war they tried to understand this, uh, this phenomenon and then this is, this is when they find out that what so-called the people in popular uh, culture, people say, uh, hear, uh, pilot error. You hear that all the time in, in uh, pilot crashes. So the idea is, the, the pilots during World War II, they had too much to deal with physically, 
and cognitively. So they, they were trying to process information, plus they trying to control the actual physical control of the plane, and they were making mistakes while they're doing that. And they're actually getting fired at either from the ground or from other planes. So instead of being shot, shot down, they were actually making mistakes and they were crashing. So this is where actually the Air Force is a leading, leading uh, supporter of, of that field because they started a lot of centers around the U.S. In, at, at universities and within, within the Air Force to try to understand what happens there and, and how can we improve the, the cockpit design. And then from there, kind of things uh, kind of spread out to every, almost every other, other area. People realize the importance of, of really understanding how the person interacts with their environment. And analogous is the pilot, pilot working with, uh, around their cockpit and dealing with, with other things around them. So I'm going to focus mostly for now on agriculture and, and how can we use ergonomics to, to improve uh, the, health, uh, the health of agricultural workers, basically. So let, let me, let me uh, first uh, give you an overview of, of California agriculture. So um, agri agriculture in California actually is the wealthiest in the U.S. It's the largest, largest uh, uh, in the whole U.S. and it's ranked first in, in food and agricultural production for the past 50 years. If you look historically, California has been the leading, leading uh, producer, especially of, of fresh uh, fruits and vegetables. So we account more than actually 50 percent of the fruit, nut, and vegetable production in the U.S. And with cash receipts of uh, 26 billion and then over 100 billion dollars in economic activity, so it's a re really major economic driver for the state of California, as you, as most of you kind of are aware. So from based on that, uh, you're going to have some people doing work in that industry. Uh, and if you look at at labor, you get most of the 350 uh, crops, they require some type of labor intensive practice, um, harvesting, weeding, and so on. So and I'll go over, over some examples of this. And we have about, you know, on average about 400,000 uh, high farm workers. They can go up much higher during, during high seasons. Uh, and then about 90% of the farm workers were uh, born in Mexico. What are the health issues faced by, by uh, farm workers who perform labor-intensive uh, jobs? As, as you would expect, the musculoskeletal disorders, so these are disorders in the musculoskeletal system, they are the most co common for all occupational injuries and illnesses. So they're actually, they're, they're at or higher even than traumatic injuries and respiratory disease. A lot of people think pesticides related to injuries are, are the highest. They're not. They're actually fairly low compared to musculoskeletal disorders uh, and, and other types of injuries and illnesses. So it is a, it is a major, and it's similar to other labor intensive uh, jobs like construction and mining and, and other heavy uh, uh, physically demanding jobs. Okay, so for, for labor-intensive labor agriculture, it is, as you expect, since the people are doing a lot of physical, physical work, they tend to be the top in industry subsector for back pain. So back pain is, is uh, number one anyway within musculoskeletal disorders, and, and it, will, it, will top it, in, it will be the highest in, no matter where, where you look at any industry. Um, and agriculture is no exception. And of course, strain, strain and strain, their most disabling injuries in California agriculture, about between 30 and 40 percent of the injury, and uh, in their most common injury in the production of fruits and vegetables nationally. So if you look nationally, it's very similar to our statistics. So what is labor in terms of agriculture? So I'm going to show you a video of, uh, some of you may have seen this, that kind of uh, overview of the main, uh, some of the main jobs that, that uh, farm workers uh, perform in, in California. And I, I guess I'm going to turn it over to uh, Rosemary. Okay, so this is, this is the kind of, again, uh, I'm going to go over 19 jobs. So the first one is, um, it's actually a broccoli. So, so these workers basically they're they're stooping and, and picking broccoli with, with a knife and then put it right into a conveyor belt and then and then there's a packing uh, people packing right on the on the harvester. 
So this is continuous, uh, you know, from early morning hours to pretty much uh, late afternoon. Same, very similar kind of operation, but now we get uh, harvesting melons. So people are stooping, they're cutting the melon, put them on a conveyor belt, and then the, 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 the fruits go up to, to the harvester, and then they package it right there. So people, the workers have literally no, no time to rest. They're basically picking all day. This is in uh, bell peppers. So again, the workers are stooping, uh, cutting, cutting the bell peppers, put them in a, in a bin, and then walk, walk to the, a conveyor belt, and, and then they, the fruits go to the... Uh, the crop goes to the uh, uh, packing. Uh, this is propagation in, in nursery. So this lady is actually cutting, making cuttings uh, specifically for propagation. So they put them in a container and eventually they become a tree uh, uh, for either ornamental or agricultural use. Uh, so, so this lady cuts about up to 5,000 cuts a day just to make clippings. Uh, those workers now are, we're showing that they're, they're actually carrying five gallon uh, containers uh, in nursery to make to make to make better foliage for the for the uh, for the uh, trees. So so they have to bend down, pick up the the, the containers, and then spread them, make space uh, between them. Uh, this is now raisins. So this is how uh, sun dried raisins is, is made as. It's a very simple thing. You cut the grapes, you put them on a sheet on the ground, you spread them, you let the, the sun dry them, and that's your California sun dried raisins, as simple as that. Now, this is a, a wine grape uh, harvesting. So the workers now, they, what they're doing, they're cutting, cutting the grape clusters, put them in a, in a bin, and then fill the bin all, and then try to unload, unload. When it's full, they unload the, the bins into a... Uh, into the gondola. So, so workers can, could do under the canopy, so they have a lot of bending under the canopy, and they dump, dump the uh, container into the gondola. Or sometimes they can, I mean, most of the time, they go over, over the canopy to the gondola. So you get a lot of, lot of uh, uh, people having overhead, overhead uh, on top of the lifting. So, and the reason why they're, they're kind of running because they're paid by piece. How many tons per day they do, they get paid. We're switching gears now to strawberries. So these workers are picking, this is a typical strawberry operation. So you get 18 inch uh, raised bed and the workers are stooping, trying to pick uh, you know, the, the, the right uh, strawberry into, into the uh, containers. So, so they're picking pretty much all day. Now this is in hoeing. So, see so this lady uh, we're showing in here. She's using a, a typical hoe to kind of uh, hold the weeds around around cotton. There. And they're they're wearing actually quite a bit of clothing and and large hats uh, because of this uh, to to protect from the sun. And they're wearing uh, a, a kind of like a scarf to cover from the dust. This is in cow milking and dairy. So this worker is actually putting. Uh, the teeth cups into the cows, so this is uh, what he does. So it's kind of a repetitive type of type of job, where where pretty much all day he's doing that. Um, this this job is actually in, uh, on top of the tomato harvester. So this lady is doing some sorting job. There's a lot of noise, a lot of fumes coming out, and a lot of vibration transmitted into her body. So she's leaning against the harvester, and there's a lot of vibration that's getting transmitted through uh, through her. This is a typical uh, citrus harvesting. So a worker will have a ladder. They set it against the tree. They go up and they start picking and they put the fruits into into a fairly large bag. It can go up to 70 pounds, 80 pounds sometimes. So they have a huge bag on your side and then while you're picking uh, from the tree. Now we're switching to sorting. This is packing house in, in citrus. So these ladies are just doing a quality check on, on, the, on, the, on the fruits. And they have a lot of, basically they're bending their, their neck almost all day looking, looking down at the, at the fruits. This is, a, again, in, in packing in citrus. So they're basically, it's like a typical industrial job. You have a box, you have a bunch of fruits, you just you dump the fruits into the box. They rearrange them, uh, close the box, and then send it to a conveyor belt. So, so it's, it's, it doesn't look, it looks benign, but they still have some forward bending all day. This is a 
typical kind of stoop, stoop kind of posture uh, attached to cilantro. So the guy is actually, I don't know if you can see it uh, well, but, but he's putting a tie right around us. There's a lot of fast motion in his wrist because he's putting the tie right after he cuts the cilantro. Uh, this is a similar job to the cilantro with now in lettuce. So the workers bend down, uh, deep bending forward. They cut the lettuce, they put them, put them on the side, and then eventually, they'll, they'll, once they cut the one row, they start packing them in boxes. And they, they take the boxes full of lettuce, and they, they load them up into a truck. So they, they have a lifting, lifting problem plus the cutting plus the stooping. stooping. So this kind of it's a situation where the workers are, are exposed to multiple problems in a way. Um, then uh, next is, is uh, this is budding and, and grafting in three nurseries. So these ladies are bent uh, on their knees, so they 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 have their homemade cushions actually to kind of support them. Uh, and what they what they're doing there is basically uh, taking the buds and then grafting it into uh, rose trees. So there's a lot of still they they're doing some bending. People think if you're kneeling, you're not bending. Okay, and the last job, actually, a lot of people think that uh, tractors do everything. So some people, uh, I mean, the workers who, who do tractor driving, they're exposed to dust and vibration. So, so this is still, still a problem for, for many workers. But most of the manual work is, is the uh, bulk of the problems that we're dealing with. So what are the risk factors that you saw from that video? Basically, in, in, uh, in the physical side, you get stoop posture. So people are stooping. Uh, it, it, in a stoop posture quite a bit. Uh, this is very common across, especially the leafy vegetables uh, crops. You, you're going to see people have to go down to the crop to cut it or, or pull it out of the roots. Um, and, and you can have some heavy lifting and carrying, as, as we saw in, in both the uh, wine grape and, and the lettuce. Uh, and then you, you see a lot of rapid handwork, either cutting or clipping, like the, uh, the lady in, in the in the nursery and, and people who cut cut uh, either either uh, um, cilantro or, or other leafy vegetables and then you get other other issues of course you know I'm not going to cover too much of it but everybody understands these these issues that, that they can affect affect your health status you know it's a mostly migrant workers uh, mostly from Mexico with limited education uh, mostly Spanish speaker but but many indigenous languages so communication becomes an issue if if, if uh, even you know Spanish, you may not be able to communicate with these workers to try to understand the problems that they're facing. Um, and and as a lot of them are undocumented, so they have this pressure pressure of uh, you know legal pressure that they're thinking about. And then they have limited a lot of them have limited family and other social support systems. So all these psychosocial uh, and cultural legal issues kind of play into their health status in, in general. So besides the physical factors, you have these, these multi layers. Uh, issues that you have to deal with, so that your your health becomes becomes even more a challenge to deal with, if you, especially when you're faced with a disability. Okay, so what type of interventions or solutions we we can do to to these jobs? Uh, uh, we can, you know, do mainly three three classes of things that, that we've been we've been dealing with uh, in in our group here at at Davis. Uh, we can reduce or eliminate the known risk factors. So eliminate to posture, re rearrange some more to kind of eliminate, it, which is kind of a little bit tough to do, but some there are some solutions in in that category. Um, you can provide them with different mechanical protection or worker aids, some better tools, better uh, tools that they can use to to really reduce the likelihood for them to get disability or injury. Uh, and and a lot of people focus on the last one, which is a training administrative and work organization, because they tend to be the easiest to implement in general. Um, sometimes they could be costly, but but they're they they th most employers think that this is the, the uh, easiest fix, although you know not always. And we've been we've been finding out uh, in the past two decades we've been doing this this that most successful intervention have been test specific. So in other words, especially in agriculture, you cannot you cannot just have a one one solution that's going to cover all all jobs because of the specificity of the of the crop itself. 
So asparagus uh, uh, harvesting is totally different than, than harvesting lettuce because the asparagus you have to go into the root, cut it in you know, fairly deep versus just a, a simple cut for the lettuce and so on. Uh, so this is a, actually a, a simple solution is a document that came out from the uh, NIOSH, National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, and actually covers some of the jobs that I've showed you, shown you and have some solutions for these jobs. So I'm going to cover some examples in there. The, uh, it is available online if you just put simple solutions, uh, NIOSH, and it will, it will be the first, uh, first thing that comes out in Google. Uh, and you can download it in both Spanish and, and in English. So the idea behind it is it gives you, uh, the, it describes the problem and then it describes the solution for it, the simple solution for it that, that farmers and farm workers could implement. So, so I'm going to show you the, some of the, remember we had the spacing, the nursery spacing problem where people are bending to kind of spread out the, the containers. Uh, we developed a tool, a simple solution that's actually uh, it's essentially, it's, a, it's an extended handle that that you just hook up to the to the uh, container, and and then you you lift it you lift it and then just walk with it. So instead of you bending down to pick up the container, you let the tool hook up to the to the uh, container, and then you have a handle to kind of carry it. So uh, th this this was very uh, useful in nursery and in, in other containers. So and you can see it. Uh, this could be used for, for a gardening uh, situation where somebody's putting a lot of plants around with, with uh, containers they can have, they can have the, or, or even carrying buckets with this handle would, would work. So from, from a gardening standpoint, this could be a very useful tool. And, and um, this is the other, other kind of ways of, of carrying uh, containers too, but uh, they're not as practical, because especially the ones with a lot of containers, uh, the one on the left. Uh, bottom and but but they the general idea is still there applies to any container that's on the ground it's better to have a handle uh, uh, to kind of extend down to it to pick it up now and then uh, this is an example from from the uh, NIOSH uh, simple solution document it shows you the problem on the left uh, in uh, far left and then it shows you the solution uh, a picture of the solutions, how, how you reduce the bending, and then, and then the nice thing about it, it shows you how to, to make it. So you don't have to buy this, this uh, uh, tool, you can actually make it uh, if you have a small, small uh, uh, shop, or you can actually ask someone to, to build it for you. It's not, it's not that difficult uh, to do. It, should, it shouldn't cost more like $20 or so. And there's a commercial uh, version of it, I think it's been sold for too much, I think like $70 or something like that, so it's not, it's a bit too much in my opinion. Anyway, but, so, like I said, it shows you the, kind of give you a roadmap of how to uh, build that tool. Uh, so this is kind of just sh show you quickly that, that we, we're using that tool uh, for the five gallon container, we reduce forward bending by 50%, grip capacity by 50% and no difference in aerobic capacity. So people have to bend less and then have to grip much less because now they're using their, their whole hand instead of pinching on the container container to lift it. Because they used to use their fingers to, to, to carry the top, now they're using the handle on the, on the tool. Um, I know if you recall the, the lady who is cutting, uh, she, did a, she does a lot of cuts per day or up to 5,000 cuts a day uh, doing clipping. So we developed a tool, actually it's an air power tool, so it's a nomadic, nomadic tool that takes the, the shear used in, in actual clipping. So we take the blades of that, uh, of that tool, put it in, in this system which, which will be uh, operating by, uh, again, by air. And all you need is just a power, uh, uh, air supply and a power supply to activate the uh, the uh, the shear so so the the lady the, the worker will just touch a micro switch on on the device and then the, the device will will cut the clipping so now now the, the person doesn't have to do any manual manual clipping they just carry carry the uh, the piece of uh, wood and then they just cut it uh, by touching the, uh, the micro switch so this this job was actually we had people we had people coming back from disability to this job because they 
they were cutting so much they've had uh, some workers have carpal tunnel syndrome in the right hand so they, they have surgery in it so they, they move to the left hand and then they start cutting and then they get problem in the left hand and they become bilateral uh, carpal tunnel they have so, so they can't do their job anymore. If you have carpal tunnel surgery in both hands it's very unlikely you're going to come back to the same job. So we brought actually back people from, from a partial disability back to their work by, by introducing this, uh, this machine. So now, now the, the lady, that's all they have to do, just literally pick up the, 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 the piece of wood and then just, just uh, um, put it against the machine and, and, and the machine will cut it. And it has a safety, safety features to it too. So that's been a success, and we're building. We've been building this this machine at cost. So we built like five, six hundred of them, and uh, they're used all over uh, now in, in nurseries. Uh, this is a video of it. So maybe kind of this is uh, the, without the safety feature. So without the cover, just to show you the, the kind of me mechanics. So you just get a bigger foot. Uh, the minute you touch touch the uh, micro switch, it just cuts it. I hope everybody got that, so get that idea. Okay, so we'll move on. Uh, so this is for sorting. Remember, the, the lady is doing the sorting in the in the harvester and in the uh, in the packing house. So you, you get mostly upper upper uh, body problems. So your neck neck and and back uh, upper back problems uh, because of the forward bending that they're doing with their necks and and upper back. Uh, so we, we had you know the grading interventions instead of making making the uh, uh, the sorting conveyor belts at three la uh, two layers so we, we asked them to, to have it instead of going up you just go to the, to the side. so now now it's in front of them instead of going up and then putting the conveyor belt uh, at the higher level than the, the, the bottom conveyor belt so this this was actually implemented this solution that we suggested was implemented in packing houses. And, and the workers like it. Uh, for harvesting in, uh, the tomato harvester, remember I told you there's a lot of vibration transmitted from the harvester into the into the uh, the worker sorting the, the tomatoes. We actually introduced them to uh, this apron that that uh, the, the worker is is wearing has has actually vibration damp dampening. Uh, 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 material into it. So we have actually special phones that, that absorb vibration. Instead of vibration going all of it through through her through her uh, uh, ab ab abdomen and throughout to her body, the the foam, the, the vibration, anti-vibration foam will absorb the majority of that vibration. So it's a simple solution. You just have an apron with an insert on it. You put the anti-vibration foam into it. And then you you isolate as much as you could the, the vibration from transmitted from the uh, machine to the person. Uh, for stew pork, we, we've done a lot of work in stew pork. Uh, remember the strawberry and even uh, the uh, the budding and grafting task. So I'll show you some of the stuff. These are this idea of prong cards. So instead of instead of you stooping to kind of pick pick the strawberry, you basically almost sleep on a bed, if you, if you may. You, you are prone, and then you're just looking down and picking. So these, this one is we made in, 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 uh, in, at our facilities, and it's, it's mainly, it's powered by, by the legs, but we, so you, you, you have like a bicycle type of uh, pedals, and you move forward and you pick the strawberries. And then uh, there are other, other ones uh, out there in Germany and, and Finland. They, they, They've done various versions of the same idea. So again, you're you're laying laying down and picking or 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 doing whatever maintenance on the crop instead of stooping in, uh, to it. Um, a lot of them are motorized, so that you just press a button and then you, you go down uh, the furrow. Uh, this is in in uh, uh, pickling cucumber in, in Germany. So it's a similar idea. You want to be prone, but this is a controlled by the tractor. So you get workers on both sides of the tractor um, laying, laying down on, on essentially beds, and then they're picking, they're picking the cucumber as, as the tractor moves forward. So this is a bit problematic because uh, if you can see, I don't know if you can see very well, but there's a, a little support for the, uh, for the neck. So they, the, the arms and neck are, are not supported. So you get, they're going to have some neck problems, these workers. The other problem with this type of situation is the, the pace 
is controlled by the tractor, not by the worker. So no, the workers have to keep up with whatever speed the tractor is going at. But still, the idea is you're not bending your back to, to pick up the, the cucumber. Um, remember the, the, uh, the ladies doing the grafting and, and, and budding? Uh, so we developed a cart, a small cart with a, to, that has a handle to crank. Uh, so you just crank the handle and, and, and your knees are laying, laying on, a, on a cushion right on, the, uh, uh, right on the cart, basically you have a cushion instead of bringing, bringing a, a pillow from home, basically. And this, one, this way you don't have to stand up and down, so you just crank the handle and then you move down. So this has some implication to gardening, so you can have something similar to that in, in the garden. Uh, somebody who kneels down to work on their roses or their whatever uh, you know they, they're doing in their garden. This could be an interesting uh, kind of uh, solution for for gardeners. On the on the right side is a similar uh, prong cart. This is this is a so it has a canopy actually we can cover, and and the newer version of this had a battery operated motor. So all that the person will do this is in roses. You can. You can actually just uh, lay prone, and then you just press a button, and then just go down, go down the ferry. Uh, again, you eliminated stoop, stooping altogether and kneeling. Okay, other uh, things like I said, you know, people have used administrative uh, type of uh, controls. Uh, we, we've done a study, a very interesting study, where where we looked at breaks. Uh, uh, our taking hourly breaks for workers instead of taking one long lunch break and without any mini breaks throughout the, throughout the day. So most workers, they work four hours, they, they take lunch 30 minutes and then work four hours continuously. So of course they can have, they can have a, a, a water break and, 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 uh, and bathroom break, but, but technically they're working four hours. So we would actually implement this and every hour you have to take a five minute uh, three to five minute break. So this is this is to kind of make you recover, recover, uh, in, uh, program recovery instead of uh, just uh, you know continuously working and then take a big break at the end. Uh, we we find significant decrease in reported symptoms if you implement this type of uh, uh, protocol. Uh, I mean, it's like almost uh, uh, ultra marathoners and marathoners. They they don't they don't go at the same same rate throughout throughout uh, the marathon. They they kind of slow down to kind of recover and then they, they pick up the speed at different times. So this is the same idea. You you're trying to make your your physiological system kind of recover during during that high intensity work and then and then you you you, you do it again uh, instead of working continuously and take a one big break again. And we find we find that places that we implemented this type of approach in strawberry and in in orchards uh, actually made a big difference in their symptoms. So they they were feeling much better at the end of the day when when versus when they just working straight uh, for four hours at a time. This is a uh, again intervention. This is what's called weight transfer devices. So it's a essentially what you're doing. You're wearing a device to Lift your upper body weight and then transfer the weight of that of that uh, upper body to the to your legs. So I don't know if you can see it very well, but the happy back is on the left. Essentially, it has bungee cords to lift lift up your upper body and transfer it to your to your thighs. So instead of having your your back doing the work, you're trying to kind of have have the the, the leg muscles supporting your your upper body weight. And we've done we've done several studies on that, showing that it has a lot of potential uh, to, for reducing back pain. Actually, uh, this is in cilantro. So remember the guy just bending down, cutting cilantro. Uh, we developed a kind of like a lawnmower, which uh, re restructured the lawnmower to essentially cut cut the cilantro and bring it up to the to the worker, and they can they can pack it. And before you know it, there's a, a Italian company that did the same thing later on. And, and now, now you see more of these uh, actually in, in the valley. In uh, Salinas, you see it quite a bit in, in these type of leafy vegetables. So it, it, the vegetables, can, the, the leafy vegetables comes up to you. You just pack it into into the containers right right at uh, almost uh, you know elbow level. 
uh, wine grapes, remember there's a lot of lifting in wine grapes, uh, there's a lot of cutting and lifting with mostly lifting, so that's a big, big area uh, for us. So, and then you get some uh, cutting, so you get some wrist problems during pruning and cutting, and you get a back, back problem during harvesting. So what we did, this is a very successful, simple solution that, that we had uh, implemented in, in both Napa and Sonoma uh, counties. Uh, we just introduced a smaller tub. So we, instead of having a, a larger tub that the workers were, were doing, we introduced a lighter tub so that the material was, was lighter and the volume is less. So we, we reduced the weight uh, 10, about 11 pounds and, and they, had to, they had to do a little bit more trips but the, the symptoms among the, the workers have, have decreased dramatically. So, so they were taking a little bit more trips, but the weight is not, not very high. Usually around 50 pounds is where, where people get start getting problems, uh, and that's been shown uh, in several studies. So this is going to show you that we reduce the symptoms by 65%, lifting force by only 19%, and then aerobic capacity was, uh, was, was the same. And then productivity was a little bit decreased, but with time actually it came back. Uh, and, and there was a study by, by ActSafe that they made and they showed that actually this, this intervention worked very well and, and it's, uh, it's now becoming almost a standard in, in Napa and Sonoma. Now, and then what we did, we, we said, well, uh, even, even 47 pounds still too much. So for people who cannot uh, lift that much, you know, what we can do. So we developed a system essentially to have people only cut and leave leave the the uh, picked up tubs in, on the ground. So this is a video um, uh, for the grape mover that we developed. And okay, so so what this is basically, like I said, so the workers are actually uh, maybe we can uh, can do that. So they they are leaving the uh, you know just cutting the grapes and leaving the the tubs on the ground, and then this machine picks picks up the tubs. Uh, and it has a fork on the ground that kind of picks up the tubs, and then and then the the machine pretty much handles all the, all the lifting. So there is no lifting by by the by the workers or or by the helpers. And there's a vacuum actually to kind of suck as many leaves as possible to kind of take them uh, away from the grapes. You still have a lot of leaves, but that's much less than than a normal picking actually. Uh, so there's a lot of leaves in your wine, guys. If you if you think about it. In any case, but um, so this is this is how again there's zero handling of the weight of the weight uh, you know this is about 60 pounds or so, and then and then uh, there's a worker at the, at the back just stack stacks the uh, the tubs and then we got a dispenser at the end to kind of give back the tubs to the to the workers. So pretty much we eliminated the lifting altogether. So there's no lifting of 46 uh, you know pounds. Uh, Per container. Okay, I think we're. Thank you. Um, so just just kind of quick quick thing about about uh, this machine. What what happened is actually it was very successful, almost too successful because the people we we, we picked were to kind of uh, do a, a small study on on this. They were picking almost uh, you know much much higher than than the, the top teams in in grape uh, picking. So they're they, they're the crew that pick, they're, they're ranked on how many tons per day they do. So people we picked for, for this machine, they were picking much more, which makes sense because they were just cutting, they were not, they were not uh, 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 lifting the tubs and, and dumping them into gondola. So it made a huge difference on the workers' health and then their symptoms were, were almost uh, you know, eliminated altogether from their back, back pain when we did that. Um, anyway, so the, and, uh, orchard harvesting, now I don't know if you, some of you are familiar with this. These are our uh, picking platform, harvesting platform. So now instead of people having uh, put a ladder and citrus and, and go go up with with a bag on your side, you just have a conveyor uh, uh, belt on the side of the machine and you just pick and then and dump the fruit right into the conveyor belt. These are becoming very popular in in Washington and other states, uh, especially Washington. Washington has been using it, and, and in California, we've been introducing them in, in North County and, and other places. Uh, the problem with them is your your uh, your uh, orchard has to be configured uh, uh, with enough space for the for the harvester to go through. So it's not not everybody can can use them if you have a tight uh, configuration in your uh, orchard. 
you know. But but the nice thing about it now you introduce, you can introduce uh, uh, all kinds of workers that they can be harvesting. You know, we have an increase. Uh, people who use these they have increase in uh, women workers that they can use it because you don't need enough a lot of strength to carry the, the the ladder and carry the bags. Now you just need to pick. So any anyone could do this job, which is which is a great solution. What else? Um, this is just kind of a kind of overview of some of the kind of basic studies I've been looking at. For ladders, we, we look at ladders of different uh, rung spacing. Uh, so, so what happens is if your spacing between your rungs, between your steps, is too high or too small, is it, does it really affect your body? So we've been doing some kind of lab studies and, and field studies on this issue. I'm going to run through these fairly quickly to kind of show you. Uh, we've had interventions for weeding. Uh, so. So this could be even for gardening, you know, some, something, uh, you know, mechanical. Uh, instead of doing hand weeding, hand weeding where you you see you have to stoop. Um, what else? We have the for bucket handling. This could be great for for gardening too. So instead of you carry big buckets to go uh, uh, feed feed the cows or or feed uh, in in this case in in family farms. Uh, or or carry buckets around around the garden. You can have a small cart that actually does does the essentially the same thing that that you physically are doing. So you hang hang the buckets on on the cart. You roll it and then and then you either dump dump the buckets or take it out and do whatever you want with it. So that's kind of uh, uh, one solution for that. Uh, this is a. We, we looked at what happens to your to your back actually when when you are stooping for a long time. Um, so we had we had you know looking at muscle activities and, and other postures and so on. So we've done you know basic studies of of what happened when you actually people are in stoop posture. Um, and then we this is an interesting system that that uh, my colleagues and I have kind of been working on. Essentially, this is for weeding. It uses uh, a GPS coordinates where the plant is. So the, essentially. The system knows from from the GPS where the planting was happening. So now it, they know what the, where the the uh, the location of the plant, and so so whenever the the it's, everything is computer controlled. So whenever the knives come come with the plant, they open the knives. It doesn't cut. In the minute it pleases the plant, it start cutting the weeds. So so this has been been a very popular. Uh, you know, system that we've been working on, and then we're trying to do it in, into multiple rows and all that. So this is the future of weeding, basically, where you eliminate manual weeding, if if you may. Okay. So what, what are, you know, in interventions, what are the feasibility on this? So if you have an ergonomic solution with, uh, or, or an intervention, there are of course the ergonomic issues that you have to kind of incorporate. Fun is it functional? Uh, you know, that's another issue. And then, is it economic? Can can you buy this big machine for for wine grape? Most people can't. Um, and then, of course, you have the social and cultural issues. Is it acceptable to to the person that you're introducing to them? Um, you can have, you may have some environmental constraints. Sometimes you may have legal and ethical constraints. So all these things you have to kind of keep in mind when you're developing a solution for for someone with uh, with injury or or disability or for prevention. From them to get injuries. Okay, uh, so just to kind of wrap up, uh, you know, we know that agricultural workers suffer excessive high incidence of musculoskeletal disorders, uh, and, and the risk factors are are multifaceted. It's not just physical. You, can, you may have other other factors too, but but of course, uh, the risk, the physical risk factors are the are the dominant, especially for people who are uh, exposed to both the the hand. People who, who cut and lift or stoop and cut, so you have you get multiple parts of your body are exposed, and and we find we find is you know ergonomic intervention changes they they could be very effective in reducing the job hazards as as we saw with the dis, uh, disabled uh, uh, nursery worker who came back to work because of the the, uh, the air powered machine. And they tend to be task specific, so you cannot put the air machine in, in harvesting or whatever, and vice versa. So, um, as you could imagine. All right. So, uh, just quickly, we, we have uh, the, the Cal Agribility. We uh, uh, through the Agribility project, we have a toolbox, um, uh, basically for assistive technology. So it shows you. It shows you, you can put a put a search to uh, search word let's say in this case milking and it comes up with a you know strap on milk to stool or honey goat milking 
certificate and so on. So you can do it for other other uh, search for gardening and, and other uh, tools. So similar similar to the database agreeability uh, ability tools have and other people. But, but this is this is at the national level. Um, Trying to see where is uh, oh here we go. That we have the website right at the end uh, to, for you to kind of check. All right, what else? So acknowledgement again. The the project was is funded by USDA uh, NIFA in this award number and some of the stuff could be translated uh, in, into other other situations so some of the interventions that we, we've done uh, like the administrative breaks could be done in, in, in other industry or even within uh, somebody who's who's uh, gardening or, or at home you know taking these mini breaks is, is really important for people to kind of avoid avoid chronic injuries uh, so just kind of a reminder of, of the how try to understand it uh, or try to kind of look at the translation into other situations uh, from from these kind of solutions that we've had. I'd like to thank everyone for listening. Thank you, Rosemary, and everyone.